or whatever time it is for you right now. For me, it's afternoon, and coming at you with some some Christmas jazz and uh, real world rain effects because it suddenly started pouring about five minutes ago, which I love. Sources set up over here so I know what color to make everything. We are on the last five pages of my sketchbook. I have the last few inked except for the very last page, but finally catching up on a few things here. So excited to share that. This is using watercolor, and watercolor you always work light to dark, so that's why I start with the brightest parts of my image. And I also like to take this opportunity to clean up some of the remnant colors from my mixing area, because that makes my life easier when I want to mix new colors. I know you're not gonna be able to hear this. I wish you could hear this, but my cat is nearby and he is snoring right now and it's amazing. Okay, honestly, that can go away. There we go. Had an ad. Thank you. I need a touch more of this pale yellow. And you got that distant rolling thunder here. What a chill day. I've also been uh, enjoying the olfactory treat of a neighbor in my building cooking the full Thanksgiving meal. Started this morning with uh, meat and carbs. Um, then there was a very strong sense of green bean casserole, I want to say. Uh, 
Uh, and right after lunch was uh, some sort of very sweet, kind of like cinnamon roll dessert that I could smell. It was great. I didn't eat any of this, but I enjoyed it. <laughs> that lettering in there. That doesn't have to be quite so neat, but when I come back to do the rest of that, which is going to be a dark green, I'm going to have to be real careful around those. That's why with watercolor you go light to dark, because you can always make things darker, but you cannot make them lighter because of the paint being translucent. It's a while to get used to, but it's fun. Okay, I think some of this is also a little tricky because um, in my reference photo that I took, there's a bunch of cars parked in front of this, so I had to sort of make up the fence, and I believe it's blue. Um, but I could be wrong. So let's see what I can do about that here. First of all, it's also not like a solid fence. So I do have to give it some substance over here. What do I do next? Probably with the sky. I don't want to get too carried away before I fill that in. So let's do that. Okay.
just laying down water right now, so there's no color with this. I'm just pre-wetting it because that's how I like to do my skies. The wet and wet technique makes it really quick and easy. And thank you for the likes, it does help. Okay, ready for some color? I did forget to do this corner up here because that yellow is still drying. I think it's pretty close to I just have to be careful around it. And I think it was, it was a little bit of a gray and overcast day when I took this photo, but I'm just making it a little brighter than it actually was. But I will add just a touch of some of that gray because it does add some depth. There we go, that should be pretty cool. Okay, now for some of these building details because they're gonna get smudged otherwise. So let's see, I want some bluey green. Gosh, my cat is snoring again. <laughs> He's been having a good day. These are watercolors. They're dried in the pans, so you reactivate them with water and then you can paint with them. I've 
been trying to clear up this pinky red color on this palette for weeks. And it's just, just what I need here. Next, I'm going to do the trees just to get those out of the middle. Thank you. Yeah, he is. <laughs> he's a void. Very silky void. And a little chonky, but we're working on it. So some of this is bleeding into the sky a little bit, and that's okay. It's it's still wet. Um, that's just me being impatient and working a little too quickly, but I don't mind that it does that, especially back here, because these trees are in the distance, and it sort of adds to that like distant blurry effect. It's quite fun. It also helps me practice uh, not trying to get everything perfect. Watercolor just in general is really great for that because you can't be, can't always be super duper precise. It's just the nature of the paint. So it's really helpful in like learning to let go. <laughs> Not trying to control everything. Uh, this brand is uh, Windsor & Newton. I think my palette is still a mix of their Cotman, Cotman series and the Professional series. I'm still sort of switching over to the Professional series, but they, they perform very similarly. So, um, And I do get them from the tubes and then let them, and I fill these pans myself with my preferred color palette. I paint batch once? I don't know what that is asking. Did I use a real gas station as restaurants? This is a um, cafe bar. Uh, yeah, cafe bar um, that is in an old gas station. So yes, this is a real place. I took a photo of it and I'm painting it. It's a really cool. It's, it's a really cool vibe there. I like it a lot. Thank you. Yeah, this is in Austin, Texas. Yeah, it's one of those, it's very Austin-y. It's just like that mix of like kind of cool hippie vibes and just, you know, low-key, quirky, but like a little country. <laughs> um, but 
but yeah, one of those places that's really laid back. And as soon as I, the first time I went there, uh, just got like a cup of coffee or something. And I was like, this feels like home. This is really comfortable here. So I wanted to paint them. It's always tough to find those third spaces that feel comfy and cozy like home. And this is this is one of them. Now we add tree dimension. Okay, um, now is where we fill in a bunch of concrete. Um, Cause I guess concrete is slightly better than a bunch of cars. <sighs> but anywho, <laughs> there will be more. This will come to life when I finally get to the color on this and more of the detail in here. But I'm just trying to lay in all of the like big wide flat areas first because uh, that's a lot easier to work on top of rather than around later. Have you ever tried painting with just dots? Um, I've done pointillism with pen and ink and I've done impressionism with oil paint but it wasn't just dots it was like just big globby uh, brushstrokes um, so not that specifically but I've gotten close. It's very fun to do. I kind of, I like working, when I do oil paints, I like working, I don't, I don't like to mix every color. I like to let them, you know, the impressionist style where they sort of blend with your eye rather than with the paint. Okay, this is gonna be a lot of, oh wait, hey, um, I was sick of mixing up ugly gray tan colors, so I got myself this ugly tan color. <laughs> which is actually a lovely color, but it will help a long way with this.
No, it's not necessarily because I'm using tube paint. Um, so you're, you're asking, I'm not using a lot of water. Um, that's because uh, I have pre-wet my paints. So I have a dropper that I use and I'll just, you know, drop everything. Some people use a mister and that will sort of reactivate the top layer here so I can work with it like it's wet paint. Um, and then that lets me use less on my brush. Uh, which is a bit easier for me. And that way I, I can have more control when I want it because I have a drier brush. I can get that nice point and work really thin lines if I need to. But here I am using a lot of water because I'm just doing a wide wash. Jamie. Fancy seeing you here. Okay, that should be good for this massive amount of concrete. Yeah, I also have this um, cloth here so I can even drag my brush even more when I wanna switch colors really quickly or just get really vivid. So like I wanna just do these cars back here real quick. And they're a bunch of different colors. So we're just gonna go red car, Headlight, or tail light rather. Rinse that off. We're gonna do a gray car. Tire, 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 another gray car. Most of these are gray and white and silver. Don't really care. It's not the interest point of my image. And I probably did that too soon because now it's bleeding into my concrete. So, again, with me being impatient, I'm just gonna dry brush and pick that up and hope it stops spreading soon. Hello, Anne-Marie. Good to see you. Happy not turkey day for you. Okay. Now I need a tiny brush. Okay. Yeah, your Canadian Thanksgiving is, is much earlier than ours. If you quizzed me on that, I would probably forget every year. Okay, guess what else is gray? This stinking car.
Yeah, your Canadian Thanksgiving seems to be much less of a big deal than the American Thanksgiving. Does that seem accurate to you? Yes, I do have Frog and Toad hanging out with me here. Wasn't sure how to fit them, best fit them on here, so um, yeah, Toad is just upside down. <laughs> Not much I can do about that. Okay, here's the other difficult thing is I had a second reference image that had a slightly better view of this front porch and it's uh, not loaded on my device over here. So I might have to wait until later to put in some of these details, but we've got to do this big old sign because it's kind of the focus. Though this one, yeah, this one's a magnet. <laughs> this one's empty. This is the only empty one. And these colors are, this is a duplicate Prussian blue that I need to toss out. And this is black, which I don't know why I even bothered to put a black in here. But okay, now the piece de resistance is gonna be this green color, which I should differentiate from that tree color. Cause it's more, it's a more gray green. So I'm gonna see if I can mix that up. It's actually gonna be kind of like Froggy's color here. That's the color green I'm going for. So let's see if I can do that. And that's gonna be a bunch of this. A little bit of darker green. And then I think uh, it's actually some tan, some of this to tone it down. Yeah. Is that close? I think that's pretty close. Okay, let's try these. It's on the bottom half of these. This is a watercolor palette, yes. Okay, and that is actually looking good. Okay, I'm happy with that. Let 
me the easy side. So I can just fill it in flat. And then going around all of those letters is gonna be real tough. But it's gonna look really great. I should actually probably switch to my teeny tiny brush. Go ahead and do that. Yes, this is in Austin. Actually, I was say, I'm glad I didn't caffeinate, um, but then I just remembered I left a cup of tea brewing on my kitchen counter um, before I started this live, and this has been going for a while. <laughs> so that's going to be some oversteeped tea. Oops. still shaking. Let's see if I can shake it out. Ooh. Don't know if that helped. Oops, and first cat hair of the painting is bound to happen. Frog and Toad, yes, thank you. I finished knitting those guys this last week, so I wanted them to hang out with me. I'm pretty proud of them. Okay, there we go. Finally got that green filled in. 
now I have to I have to develop the shadows in here. They are too light still, but better too light than too dark. <laughs> yeah, better too light than too dark because I just add on a big old blob of concentrated color. That is uh, how I roll sometimes. No, actually it's uh, it's a little difficult with this uh, paint gray. Uh, it's hard to tell, especially because I have dark bristled brushes, it's hard to tell how much gray is on my brush which is why I sometimes will like dot it up here just to see how much I got going on and then I can tone it down um or I will you know put a blob on and be like whoop that's too much and then I'll dip it straight in the water and like just spread it around as needed from there just some different methods of color control when you're working kind of fast and loose Because again, I am impatient. Okay, shadow goes down there. Yeah, Payne's Gray Roulette. <laughs> See ya. That's a pretty apt description, I would say. Okay, speaking of, we still need some more under here. Thank you for all the likes. I see you tippy tapping over there. Okay, I really want to just put in some of this blue fence. Even though I don't have my other reference image, which is my fault. I know it's a light blue. And we have a creative license and our imagination. So, you know, we're just going to do, do what we want. What could go wrong? She said her final words.
Okay, this is where it gets weird because like perspective, things get closer together the further the way they are. I don't know how far apart to space these things. So That looks okay. How did that work out? How did that work? Oh God, okay. Whew. Getting that spacing right? I, I, don't, I don't know how I did that. I really don't. Uh, why is this, <laughs> why is this car all one color? Oh man, I'm not paying attention to everything. Okay, switch back to this one because cars are not two dimensional. Um, and we'll just be like, oh, come on. See, I cannot tell how much is on my brush. Oh bam, oh bam. I don't know what's going on. Oh. Here I go making sound effects for my paint. Ooh, you know. Uh, mm, ah, mm, ah. Yeah, thank you. You know how paint sounds. It goes shaka and la bam. Super realistic. Ah, whatever, okay. I don't really care that much about the rest of that. Oh, uh, but fame my dinner. You get yummy foods. I just had the uh, olfactory delight of smelling my neighbor's cooking. It was, I mean, I literally got like a full course meal over the course of this morning and early afternoon. Including dessert, which smelled amazing. I think it was like some sort of syrupy, cinnamony, something or other. It was, mmm. Made my nose happy. Magic. Oh, also, this is a slightly different green. Let's just give it that wash. And then there's like a bajil a bajillion chairs, tables and chairs behind that fence that I was not gonna do. Cause that would be just tiny, insane amounts of detail, but there's just we'll just blob in some nonsense to be like, yeah, stuff is happening behind here, but we don't we don't know and we don't really care what.
<laughs> Just sp spray your family members you don't like with water bottle. I mean, it works for cats. How did I decide on what to draw? I like to draw unique places I've visited and enjoyed. So the rest of this book is very much that, of just restaurants I've been to or places I've shopped at or just things that look aesthetic. Like I didn't actually buy any coffee. This place wasn't even open when I was there, but I just liked their graffiti wall. Um, things that have a cool vibe and, and so on. So, you know, that's how I decide. Okay, now I need just a few details in this very boring cement to make it uh, passably interesting or passably not boring. Not, not just a, you know, wash of gray, green, tan, black. And these plants over here, which I'm just going boop, 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 with sound effects. You're welcome. I think uh, my cat likes jazz because he is still just passed right out. This must be his thing, his, his sleepy music. I mean, it can be my sleepy music. Thank you, Jamie. Bye. Have a good one. I take a picture. All of these have a photo reference, which I have pulled up in front of me over here. Um, I Drawing from my imagination does not work, so I do this instead. the snores. I'm just adding some texture in to make this a little less boring. So it's kind of boring to do, but I know it pays off in the end. And this does have a bit more shadow. Again, with Spain's Gray Roulette, we don't know what's going to come out. 
There we go. <laughs> Thank you. The, yep, the frogs I finished knitting just last week, so they're hanging out with me now. Because I don't have enough hobbies. Enjoy dinner and see you later. Thanks for stopping in. Okay, I think I'm about done with what I can do here. Whoops. Okay, I'm gonna... I think... Oh yeah, this guy has... Some spots. Very light spots. Spots nonetheless. Okay, I think let me. I'm gonna do a visual once over between this and my reference and see if there's anything major missing. Um, let's see. Actually, yeah, I'm gonna darken. Up of these. Still don't think this is dark enough under here. I'm trying not to go overboard with this. So it's easy to do, but it's just it keeps drying down lighter than I'm expecting. So close to finished for now. I'm gonna add some white pen detail after everything is dry, but other than that, there's another page in the sketchbook. Thank you for joining me and have a good weekend. Bye!